So what is up, guys? Nick here, helping you to master your technology. Galaxy S23 versus iPhone 14 months later. Now, I've had both of these phones since they originally launched, and I got to talk to you about my experience owning and using both of them and why the iPhone is definitely needs a big upgrade with the upcoming 15. We're going to begin by talking about the value for money. So the Samsung Galaxy S23 right now can be found at prices that are much lower than, you know, certain iPhone 14 models. But the S23 already for $529 on eBay. You can get this thing new for around $699 and sometimes even cheaper depending on where you look. Now, when you look at the key specification, 6.1 inch dynamic AMOLED display, 50 megapixel triple camera capable up to 8K recording, 8 gigabytes of RAM, Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, and a 3900 milliamp hour battery. It seems quite impressive value for money versus the iPhone 14 giving you a 6.1 inch 60 hertz display, 12 megapixel dual camera, 4K 60 recording, 6 gigs of RAM, Apple A15 Bionic found in the iPhone 13 and 3279 milliamp hour. So months later, I just felt like while the iPhone still has the draw of iOS and the ecosystem, the Samsung from a hardware perspective has been the better pick. It's just always felt like why did I even buy an iPhone 14? You know, it, it's time that Apple really gives us another strong value offering at the base level, iPhone 15. I'm really excited to see what they're gonna do with that model. Now, from a build and design perspective, the S23 has also been the better option. Here's why. The edges are a little bit more comfortable. While they're both kind of this squared look, the S23 actually has more of a curved edge. And while not as smooth as the S21 models, for example, or even, well, the S22 is pretty similar, but the S21 models, the the edges are just a little smoother than the iPhone 14, which are a little sharper. I find the iPhone 14 models a little bit less ergonomic than things like an iPhone 11, for example, although they are industrial looking with their squared edges. The S23 actually comes in at a thinner look here, and even the cameras are quite flush on the S23, and it feels like it's just a little bit smaller to hold than the iPhone 14. So I feel like Samsung is beating Apple at their own game here with the uh, Galaxy S23. Um, so for me, the S23 is the better body. It's the better feel in hand. It's a little bit more ergonomic and a little bit more comfortable day to day for sure. At this price point, months later, the iPhone 14 feels like a heavier iPhone 12. That's about it. And from a durability standpoint, they both have IP68, but what I like about the S23 is that it has more of that iPhone 14 Pro-like feel with the matte textured glass. It is an aluminum frame, which is more reminiscent of an iPhone 14, but at the same time, it kind of looks like stainless steel. So in my opinion, the S23 actually feels more like an iPhone 14 Pro competitor than to this phone, which has the older glass feel, which Samsung had on like the S21. And then over here, you'll find the aluminum rails that are matte, which I do like because they stay clean. At the same time, they definitely don't look quite as premium as iPhones have been having these this kind of look for several years when it comes to just the build of materials. Now, when it comes to the display, I think the Samsung wins it here, even though the iPhone does have a technically higher pixels per inch. Let me explain why. The punch hole is much less obtrusive than this massive notch right here. In addition to that, you'll see we do have thinner looking bezels across the display, giving the impression that you have more screen the bezels are quite thin here on the iPhone 14, but they're still definitely a little bit thicker looking than the uh, Galaxy S23. Now, the S23 also has a higher peak brightness. Now, I would argue that a peak brightness is more important than having a few more pixels per inch on a density um, scale. So if we go over here to display and you put an adaptive motion smoothness, we also have a 120 hertz panel versus a 60 hertz, which is not only smoother, but brighter. So the actual experience of using this phone is better than the 14. You do have a natural mode, which kind of kind of match up to an iPhone look as well, if you need that less vivid look. But when you throw it in the vivid mode, it's also more punchy and more saturated than what you'll find on the iPhone 
over there. So the Samsung Galaxy S23, in my take, has the better display. It's just it's more enjoyable. It's more colorful, brighter. Now the iPhone still has a good display, but they need to make some upgrades to the motion smoothness on the next base model iPhone. Maybe even consider going to Dynamic Island to give it a more of a fresher feel because this notch and this same display since iPhone 10 basically, or well, let's not go back that far. An iPhone 12, same display since iPhone 12. It's just not cutting it in terms of being impressive anymore. So let's talk about software. I feel like this is the only really strong suit um, for the iPhone here in this comparison. And that's because it doesn't matter what Samsung does. It doesn't matter what other companies do. You know, software, unless you're a tech fan and you're willing to try other platforms, which not everyone is, the main draw that keeps people here on this iPhone no matter what is going to be iOS. So it doesn't matter if they bring out more hardware on the left. iOS is the draw here, but the software is a big improvement over years past on the Samsung phone in that it's finally very fast and smooth and basically lag free, even while containing all of these advanced features that you typically don't find on the iPhone over here, including things like Samsung Dex, which turn your phone into a computer. Not only that, you know, we can't even get split screen on a Mac's iPhone, but we can do all this pop view stuff here and all these multitasking abilities on a 6.1 inch Samsung. That's pretty embarrassing for the Apple side. But I will tell you from a customization standpoint, you can definitely do a lot here. Um, but what I really think about this in 2023 at this point is that you now have the ability to keep it simple with just the one UI interface and never really customize, or you can dive really deep and you have a polished customization experience if you use the Galaxy Theme Store. Now on the iPhone 14, you have the app library and you do have you know some widgets, grid of icons, which is simple. And I feel like this software just fades into the background of your life. Once you get used to it, it's just kind of like an appliance. It just works, it's just there. Whereas a Samsung can do the same thing, it just works, but when you get bored, you have a little bit more fun you can have with the Galaxy. So if you're open-minded to try the One UI, I think right now, between these two, this is the more fun phone. But if you're entrenched into the Apple ecosystem, this is still a solid offering, but I think it's gonna be better with the 15. Now from a performance perspective, the iPhone 14 is a blazing fast phone with the Apple A15. It's actually a little bit better than the one in the iPhone 13. If you didn't know that, it's slightly quicker, but not by anything really noticeable, but enough that, you know, it's probably gonna have maybe a half a year better update or a year better update than the iPhone 13. The iPhone 15 coming soon needs a faster display, but software wise, it flies just with a 60 Hertz display. That's the best way I could put it. But Samsung has been taking notes because this year, the Qualcomm Snapdragon Gen 2 design for Galaxy is a rocket phone. You'll just find faster animations. You'll find better gaming, you know, thermals on the Galaxy S23 than ever before. And you can take advantage again, like we showed earlier with the multitasking abilities. So from a perspective of, you know, performance, you really can't go wrong with either here. But the Samsung is taking better advantage of the power that is provided to you. Another area where you actually get a better value is going to be the storage department. Now, oftentimes Samsung is throwing deals and they usually include the higher 256 gig storage. Um, the iPhone gives you 128 gig. So you're going to pay usually for 128 gig the same price as you pay for 256 gig on the Samsung. And I don't know about you. But in 2023, we are massively filling up the storage game pretty quickly with all the pictures and videos we take. So I'll take the more storage. So the Samsung definitely wins it out and having a little bit more storage as well. All right, so from a per camera perspective, we do have a triple camera on board here. We're gonna go ahead and take a picture of this Google Pixel tablet box. I will be reviewing this on the Mornick Ackerman channel soon, still testing it out. But let's go ahead and take a picture here as well on the iPhone. So from just generally taking photos, you're gonna win it out on neither. It's just gonna come down to personal preference. I think at this point we kinda know what Samsung versus iPhone photos look like. Um, it's pretty much the same here. Let's get up out of here, hold on. And th throw that thing in the rotate. 
it's really just going to come down to what kind of style you like more. Now, personally, I do like the Samsung's, you know, feature set. It's really good. It has a lot of easy to use features like the aspect ratios. Everything is front and center. And if you go over here to more, they have a lot of fun, fun modes. Like specifically, I like the food mode for when you're taking those foodies. And then if you go over here to more, you have now expert raw pro videos and director's view portrait videos. There's a lot you can do to really take full advantage of the camera. And it's also pretty customized, customized, customizable. Sorry. You can go ahead and bring it. And these modes are pretty customizable. So if I grab, you know, a portrait motor, for example, I can bring it down there. And then you can kind of just put the camera modes you want down there. Now, one of the big draws here, too, is that, you know, you get 8K video on this phone. That's pretty insane for the money. I mean, if you want to do it, you know, that's that's future proofed right there. In addition to that, you do have that telephoto zooming lens, which really just steps all over the iPhone 14. Now, they have their super steady on the iPhone or on the Samsung, but Apple brings an action mode, which is huge if you're going to be doing GoPro-like footage on here. Definitely a draw to this phone. Great photos and excellent video support. I'd still probably pick the iPhone if I'm just doing pure video. Um, but overall, the camera, more features, more versatility on the Samsung. Months later, I find that the iPhone's simpler, but not quite as good of a value in terms of everything that it's giving you. Now, the front-facing cameras, those are also quite good. And Samsung pictures are starting to look a little bit better when it comes to social media. You can back it out here, no problem. And then you have a pretty sharp video quality on the front up to UHD 60. Now, on the iPhone, I still like the way iPhone photos look on the front. They're just bar none, some of the best out there. And then video also looks amazing on the front. So again, with the video, again, if I'm matching up video, I probably would still pick the iPhone 14 if I'm using my phone for mainly video, but you could see I'm using a real camera. But for those of you out there relying on your phone for video, I think the video editing apps are better on iPhone. And I think the front facing camera is a little bit better for video. So the Samsung doesn't have crash detection and you know, all those things that they brought with the SOS. That is a plus for the iPhone, but from a reception standpoint, they still have better signal, better 5G performance, not by a ton, just a little bit. I found it's just a little bit better with holding the full strength of bars day to day, but phone call quality is pretty good on both. Some people have said that they have iPhones and they can't get signal in rural areas. I'm able to get it, but it's still not quite as good as the one on the Samsung. So this is why I think in almost every area, the Samsung has been a better value months later. I really like the iPhone 14, but I think most people don't like it because in their mindset, they're comparing it to last year. This phone on its own from somebody who's coming from an older iPhone is a great, great iPhone. But for people who had an iPhone 13, 12 or watch the channel, they know about the recent iPhones. This phone is just boring and it's been talked about since it came out. Um, people have been saying how much they don't really care about it and they've even shown it. Um, with not purchasing it. The Samsung, though, has been the complete opposite. A really great value, something Samsung needed to bring to really up the overheating problem. Well, I'm not going to say problems, but the, the S22 got hot. That phone just got hot, uncomfortably warm. Great device, but this one was just much more polished and um, definitely the recommended choice. I would, I would recommend over to 14 if you're willing to go and try out Samsung. If you're not, wait it out. We got a couple months left to the iPhone, well, like a month and a half to the iPhone 15 with Dynamic Island, more than likely. So stay tuned for that. If you found the video helpful, entertaining, or just informing, click the like button for me. Subscribe if you haven't already. Nick here. And which one would you pick? Let me know down below. Be sure to be well and peace.